Hi, um, I'm Yui Cao. I, I work for Pivotal Software. I am also the Runtime PMC lead in the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Uh, as you can see from the title of the talk, uh, I'll be giving an update on Cloud Foundry isolation segments, formerly known as Elastic Clusters. Uh, so let's get started. Microphone. Microphone. Is this better? How do I go back? I can't go back, but I'm Yui Kao. Um, and I, I work for Pivotal Software. Uh, I'm also the runtime PMC lead in the Cloud Foundry Foundation, so you might know me from, from that. Uh, and as you can see from the talk, I'll be giving an update on Cloud Foundry isolation segments, uh, formerly known as Elastic Clusters. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I, I'd like to frame the problem we're trying to solve. Uh, now, a lot of you out there, you might start with one Cloud Foundry, and that's great. Um, it, it might look a lot like this, it's, although this doesn't really mention the data stores or all the other components required for coordination. You may have even striped them across three AZs for availability. And, um, and as more apps come to the platform, you can just scale the appropriate tier, you know, whether it's the routers or the cells or the logging tier. Um, and that's great, but then uh, this happens. Uh, you end up with more deployments of Cloud Foundry for, for one reason or another, or, or maybe even this happens. I, I do know of, of uh, an organization that has 15 deployments of Cloud Foundry, um, and there are a lot of different reasons for that, um, perhaps for disaster recovery or HA or dev versus prod. Um, but there are some operational concerns um, to maintaining so many Cloud Foundries, like keeping roles and permissions in sync across all of those Cloud Foundries. Um, the base cost of running a Cloud Foundry, I think we're at somewhere about 20 VMs or so uh, of different sizes for, for a single Cloud Foundry. And as you have more VMs and uh, Cloud Foundries, the deployment complexity and the maintenance costs are, are high. So, so then it's prudent to ask, you know, can we reduce the overhead, right? Um, for each of those additional deployments that you have or, or wish to have, uh, we can start with asking two questions. Uh, is it okay to have a shared um, single management tier between those CF deployments, right? Uh, one set of admins for the whole deployment, um, uh, one set of data stores, a uh, cloud controller database or blob store. Um, might be some con concerns you have there. And if those are okay, great. Um, and the second question is, is the latency low between those deployments? Um, we ask that right now because in this uh, feature set, we're not specifically solving for instability that's introduced in between the shared components um, as, you, uh, as latency increases. Um, although that may be something that could be addressed later. But for now, if yes to both of those, then I think isolations could help reduce some of your overhead. Uh, so what's an isolation segment? And I'll just read this here. It's a group of Cloud Foundry resources, compute, network, and or logging to which applications can be directed for deployment. And I'll di digress here for a moment to talk about naming. Um, so, so what's in a name? Uh, we've renamed and reworked this proposal and feature set in the architecture a few times, run into a few walls. Um, it's been called placement pools and isolation groups and elastic clusters. Um, we've now settled on isolation segments, thanks to a suggestion from Sandy Cash from IBM. It derives from a discussion of isolation and segmentation requirements as they pertain to PCI DSS, which a fair amount of you care about. Um, I'm also fond of the word segment, as it's not quite as overloaded as some of the other terms, like groups or clusters or zones. Um, so let's get back to it. You've got you know, four Cloud Foundries pictured here. Um, you, developers m have to target four different um, endpoints and hopefully push their app to the correct one. Your admins may have difficulty um, keeping the permissions correct. So given an org and a space, should that user have the same permissions across all of them, or does it vary because maybe one's prod and one's dev or test? Um, the operator management 
um, they have to think about what the patch levels are. You, you might end up not patching one of them for a really long time, and it just gets really out of sync. Um, so, but, so let's assume that for these deployments, an isolation segment m might help to, to reduce this, this overhead. And so let's, let's take a look at what that might look like to create an isolation segment. This is really the simplest type of isolation segment I'm showing here. It involves deploying an additional set of cells. Um, where, and you've got shared management, um, routing, and logging, but you can have dedicated compute resources. Uh, in this architecture, you could associate different, different VM types to different isolation segments. Um, perhaps the blue segment has lots of CPU and solid state drives, or perhaps you have an organization that has quality of service guarantees, uh, such as CPU availability, or perhaps you're offering Cloud Foundry as a service, you'd like to be able to charge an organization for a dedicated usage of a set of cells, like a kind of premium, premium usage. Um, Additionally, you can consider using this as a way to add additional runtime capabilities in a, in a smaller set, such as like an NFS driver to a set of cells in a segment, uh, thanks to the recent uh, persistence work, which you can uh, learn more about in a talk tomorrow, um, NFS and shared file systems as a service. Um, you could then enable a specific service broker with plans that are just for that org or space. So really just um, kind of adding premium capabilities um, for particular uh, deployments. Um, another possibility might be creating segments that are known to spin down at nights on weekends. So that's, that's some other possibilities may come to you um, as, as you think through these. Um, so let's take a look at a possible UX for, for for this, I have not run this by the CLI team, but this is the general uh, intention. Um, so as a cloud controller admin, you can create an isolation segment, let's name it blue here, um, and then you can bind it to a space in a particular organization, and your space developers, all they have to do is CF push. They don't have to know about that and th or think about that in the scenario. Um, in a future milestone, um, and I believe some, some work is also underway to, to introduce this UX, it, um, we've proposed that an, an admin can associate multiple um, isolation segments to an org, and then an org manager could self-service um, and associate uh, particular segments to particular spaces. Um, the next type of isolation segment that I'd like to talk about is um, routers and cells. Um, from what I've heard, this is perhaps the most compelling use case for a fair amount of customers, and most likely to help reduce overhead. Um, with this, you can isolate application traffic for a particular set of apps in a segment. You'd need to configure DNS and your edge load balancer to direct routes to the correct set of Go routers, and the Go routers for that segment would need to be configured to only forward traffic for routes with, with that segment. So, so from the edge load balancer through the Go router and onto the cells, the entire application request is contained within the segment, um, and, uh, and which, which is quite, quite nice if you have certain um, uh, segmentation requirements there. Um, with each of these segments, Operators would need to select how strict the networking separation is for each segment. Um, now, we do have a specific requirement for console to be able to talk across segments um, on a specific set of ports and IPs uh, in the initial milestones. Um, but otherwise, the only uh, required communication um, is between the individual segment and back up to the management tier. We're also hopeful that in future, the requirement for console communication across the segments uh, will no longer be required um, as console allows for the kind of hub and spoke model. Um, there's an additional nuance about how to deal with domains and routes in a self-service way in this model, uh, which may or may not apply to your organization. Um, 
perhaps there's a shared subdomain for each isolation segment that requires routing, and the CFCLI could be enhanced to highlight which shared domains are dedicated to a particular segment. Um, there's an additional proposal plan to deal with how to elegantly handle um, domains and routing. But if you have ideas or suggestions in this area, uh, we'd welcome your feedback. You can comment right on the, the existing proposal right now. Now, a third type of isolation segment that I'm showing here um, involves adding logging to that. Um, perhaps you're, or you have an organization that has compliance or security requirements that or require that application logs from a set of apps uh, deployed to one segment are never commingled with logs from another segment. Um, and if you have this particular use case, I'm very much interested in talking to you so I can understand um, which aspects of logging need to be isolated a little better. There, there's actually many components in the logging system, so there's many choices we could make there. Um, there is another related aspect that I'd like to touch upon briefly before wrapping up that involves trust uh, between components. You know, could, could we add authentication and authorization between components? So ensuring workloads intended for blue components cannot be accidentally sent or received by components in, in the red segment, which may be of a lower trust classification, right? Maybe those logs go into a public domain somewhere. Um, now, I'm not a security expert, and we'd not need to run this by someone with more security background, but a possibility we've discussed is perhaps using a set of certs for each component, um, and as each component communicates with the management tier, the management tier could do some additional verification on the OUs of the cert, um, where each OU maps to a segment, and if this trust mode is enabled for a segment, only components bearing the appropriate certificate issued by the trusted CA from the management tier could uh, receive that particular segment's workload. Um, so to wrap up, um, I, I hope for those of you with multiple Cloud Foundry deployments or planned uh, growth of Cloud Foundry, isolation segments could help reduce the total number of deployments under management. Um, your feedback is, is really valuable and needed on the proposal, um, which can be found here at this URL. Um, I am really optimistic that we'll reach the first milestone by the end of the year, which includes um, compute and the CLI um, uh, uh, commands associated with that. Uh, right now, we've got the initial work uh, for this first milestone done in Diego, um, the CRUD for it and Cloud Controller are done, and we just need to flow that information through, um, and then also implement the CLI commands. Uh, you can find progress updates and links to relevant trackers in that proposal at the bottom, um, and additional proposals for some of the future milestones um, as we get, uh, as, as we add more capabilities to this, uh, will will be posted, so be on the lookout for those and would love your feedback for that. Great, questions? <laughs> Johannes? So if I need those isolation segments right now, yes. there is this stack hack, right? There is a stack hack. It's not great. There's a, a the build packs don't like the stack hack, for example. That's exactly my question. So the stack hack, I'm basically requesting a specific stack for my application that I stage it, and only providing that stack on specific cells, I get like pseudo segmentation. Um, what are the downsides of using that? The stack hack. Well, for for one, you're 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 hacking. It's not, it's, not, it's not supported, so it's, it's in a fork. Um, uh, two, um, as you can see from the UX, right, um, if you're doing the stack hack, you actually have to think about uh, what stack you're, you're going to, right, um, and, and whether that's appropriate. Another uh, issue with the stack hack is the build packs aren't actually 
depending if you handled it correctly, the build packs are looking for a particular stack to be able to determine what binaries are the right binaries to use when you're staging your app. And so um, it looks at that CF underscore stack variable during staging um, to see like, oh, you're on um, CF Linux FS2, we'll get, get those binaries. Um, so I, I haven't looked too deeply into the stack hack, um, so I don't know how well it, it addresses that issue. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so this would we we think would also be possible. You might need a separate Bosch director right now, um, and and uh, you share uh, the appropriate things in the manifest um, because right now a, a single Bosch director can't target multiple CPIs. Um, and you'd also have to consider uh, that latency, right? If you're wanting to burst to Amazon, maybe that would be okay. Maybe it would work, but um, uh, I, I don't know. You'd have to test it to see if the latency issues are, are large enough uh, to, to cause issues. And that's something um, I'm hoping one of the teams can explore about, you know, how much latency um, uh, is, is, is this architecture tolerant to? Yes. So if I understand this correctly, each of the isolation segments is an individual bot you're doing? Um, they, I, I, I don't believe it has to be. It can be a separate Bosch deployment. Probably has to be in case you're upgrading stuff. You don't want to migrate your applications if you're upgrading the table cells from like one of the segments to another one. Or you would introduce like another layer in the update part of your manifest. Right? I think you do introduce the additional complexity of segments into the update itself. That's true. I haven't actually looked at what the manifest changes look like. That, that Eric has done on the Diego team, so it's possible he's done it as a separate job. Jim, you would know. <laughs> the, uh, the isolation segment, does it have to be a separate deployment? So if it's a property on the cell, then you could deploy just cells and then associate the property then, right? And then you could choose. Yes. Um, as uh, we're, we're looking to, to get this out as quickly as possible, so the, the simplest thing is, as an admin, I can bind to it. Um, uh, again, we're, we're hoping to introduce some uh, self-service UX where um, an admin can, can map particular uh, isolation segments to an org, perhaps, and then an org manager could self-service those uh, isolation segments to the spaces that he's managing. Does that make sense? Yes. Sorry. The the question Guillaume asked is um, uh, in in the proposal he had asked a question about um, at at the Go routers you could. Uh, associate multiple isolation segments to them. Um, and again, this kind of depends on what type of uh, isolation you need at that level, right? If you're okay sharing um, a set of Go routers uh, across um, maybe two of your segments and you have five segments, right? There, there's two segments that, that, you'd, that you're okay with sharing that routing tier with, um, then the, that Go router, can, can just contain the routing table for those two sets of, of, uh, of segments, and then it can direct uh, the traffic to the appropriate segment. And again, like the, the sticky point here is around uh, how you set up your network. You know, does it allow um, uh, 
uh, if you've done uh, the segments in separate networks, uh, does it allow communication from this set of routers to the other side, uh, to the other set of cells? Um, but it, it's possible, depending on how you've configured your deployment, that you could have a shared, uh, shared set of routers um, across uh, multiple uh, compute. Is it likely to expand across? Uh, are the logging systems likely to be uh, shared across multiple IS, just like the routers um, uh, aspect I think it's possible for the logging system, but it, it, the logging system is um, quite a bit more complicated than the other components. So there, there's still some design to be done in terms of what that would look like in terms of how you discover the appropriate uh, traffic controller to hit to find out where your apps, uh, where your logs app, uh, to, to, to get at the logs for your app, right? Um, the, there's some amount of coordination. You have got some logs from the central management tier that need to get to the right place to be able to read them out. All right, um, if no other questions, thank you very much.